To begin this hour in the Zamfara state where at least 13 persons have been killed by armed bandits in a fresh attack on different communities in Anka, local government area. Spokesperson of the State Police Command, Mohammed Ushehu, said the affected communities include Kadadaba, Rafingeru and Babanbaye. One of the affected villages is near the Anka local government headquarters. The police also denied stories making the round of the attack on Dakin Takwas, a community in Gumi local government area. The police assured of their readiness to respond to the distress call while calling on residents to always cooperate with security agencies to secure communities. And less than a week after the train attack bound to after the attack rather on Kaduna bound train, more details are emerging from the ugly incident. The Nigerian Railway Corporation has confirmed the safety of 170 passengers on the ill-fated Kaduna bound train, while 21 passengers are reported missing by relatives who reached out to the corporation. In setting the record straight, the NRC says the ill-fated train comprised 11 coaches with a total seat capacity of 840. It also adds that the train manifest contained 362 validated passengers on board. And according to the statement signed by the managing director of the NRC, Fidet Ohiria, the corporation is working round the clock to rerail the coaches affected by the bomb attack, but that four coaches have already been rerailed and safety safely taken to the Rigasa station in Kaduna. And in line with the directive of President Muhammad Buhari's arrangement is underway to put in place increased security along the tracks and on board to and on board rather to prevent a recurrence of the unfortunate incident. Well, let's go to Taraba State now, where the government has declared wanted the owner of a collapsed story building under construction. The building collapsed early on Friday, killing two workers while three others were wounded. In speaking at the scene of the accident, the State Commissioner for Urban Development, Salah Saad, Salah Saad rather, said the owner erected an illegal building and is declared wanted. And our correspondent, Olabi Adinusi, filed in this report. Residents of Nika area of Jalingo came out to rescue victims of the collapsed story buildings from rubbles. The Commissioner for Urban Development and team from the Standard Organization of Nigeria did their best to avert further casualty during the rescue operation. The state government insists that the building, belonging to a major building material dealer, Uchiobi, was illegally erected and the owner will be prosecuted. The ministry, under my leadership, had ordered for the immediate arrest of the owner of the building simply because um, the ministry is not actually aware. Uh, we had made effort to stop the building, having noticed that uh, the owner is, has been at the site without our approval. He has not granted, we have not granted any approval to him. And so as far as the ministry is concerned, this is an illegal structure. The lead representative of SOM said they were surprised to learn that the building belonged to Mr. Obi, who recently took the commission to court for selling one of the business centers for selling substandard building materials. We are not aware that he has opened a new place until when this incident happened. We are in court. He has taken the organization to court and the case is already ongoing in the court. Eyewitnesses and some residents want government to take necessary action to serve as deterrent to others. Chief Ucho Obi should be highly prosecuted because if only he has not gotten a permission and he went ahead by building a the place using substandard materials, he should be highly prosecuted. The fact of the matter is that if you have erected a building in an urban area that is not to the knowledge of the urban planning or the, the, the appropriate authorities. Such person should be prosecuted because it is criminal. Effort to reach Uchi Obi as at the time of filing this report did not yield positive results as his phone was switched off. The prayer of the relatives of victims of the collapsed buildings is to see government take necessary action by probing the cause of the death of their beloved one and prosecuting those 
Well, let's move on to other news where today marks the first day of Ramadan and Muslims around the world, including Nigeria, have commenced the month-long fast. Ramadan begins with a sighting of the new moon as announced by the Sultan of Sukhothai Saad Abubakar III on Friday, who said that the moon was sighted in some parts of the country. Meanwhile, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has congratulated Muslim faithful in the country on the commencement of the month of Ramadan. The President of the Senate, in a statement, said that the essence of the period is more significant for people to pray for the country and seek guidance to proffer solutions to the challenges facing the country. He asked Nigerians to continue to pray for the country, assuring that the federal government is doing everything possible to tackle the challenges. Senator Ahmed Lawan said, quote, The holy month of Ramadan provides the faithful the opportunity to commune with Allah and live as his prophets enjoin us to do as we seek his blessings and mercies. End quote. And the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabi Amila, has also facilitated with Muslims on the commencement of Ramadan. He asked faithfuls to pray for the security of the country, also stressing the need to unite against insecurity and other challenges. Femi Bajabi Amila believes Ramadan fasting entails a lot of sacrifices, including total abstinence from food and other indulgences. He enjoined Muslims to observe the fast in accordance with Islamic injunctions. And also the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has congratulated Muslims in Nigeria and around the world on the commencement of the holy month of Ramadan. Ashiwaju Tinubu noted that Ramadan wants Muslims to show greater compassion, empathy and understanding in how they treat and relate with the people. The former governor of Lagos State acknowledged that Nigeria is gifted with bountiful resources and decent people, but the nation also faces serious challenges because of a small set of people. The statement reads, quote, We shall not be made despondent by the wrongs these people do. Instead, let us renew and strengthen our faith and trust in Almighty Allah and his great mercy towards us, end quote. He enjoined Muslims to use this period to pray fervently to overcome the challenges facing the nation. Now, the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, has congratulated renowned professor of energy and management, Anthony Ulushegu Adegbulube, as he turns 67. Ashiwaji Tinubu commended Professor Adebulube for his exemplary academic record and useful contributions to Nigeria and the international community. In a statement by his media office, the APC note leader noted that the professor distinguished himself in the academia as he did in government. Professor Adebulube was the special advisor on energy matters as the president of Nigeria and the chairman of the Gas to Power project between 2005 and 2007, who introduced a number of policy initiatives in that sector. As the Ondo state-born egghead turns 67, the APC national leader prayed God to grant him many more years, renewed wisdom and intellect to continue to be useful service to Nigeria and the world at large.